Guys, and welcome back to the Gone for 10 show. And you know what they say, commentators curse. We came on two weeks ago. We said all the computer issues are fixed, and they went downhill after that. But we've been able to yep. figure it out. We've sorted it out. You've got myself, Tony. I'm joined by Baxter. Baxter, mate, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh, I've had a good day over the long weekend and uh, a good game of footy. I don't think we've been back since Orig uh, Origin 1 has been played and done. So uh, we'll touch on that a little bit later on. But what a great well, maybe, weekend of football. Maybe that's the reason, Baxter, we haven't been back. Maybe I blame computer issues. or just because New uh, South Wales went down. I didn't want to jump back on. But maybe. like you said, we do have a state of origin pre uh, review at the end of this episode. We will have a preview. So we'll jump on those this week. We'll get it out over the weekend. A little bit of content on what our thoughts are going into game two on the sides, what we thought about game one. But first, Baxter, we have Queensland versus New South Wales, but it's not state of origin. It's your boys, the North Queensland Cowboys, taking on the Penrith Panthers. Talk to me about your lineup. Yeah, look, it's pretty pretty impressive, especially with Tom Dearden not being called up for the uh, set of origin uh, selection there. But we got Scotty Drinkwater in the fullback role, Kyle Felt, Zay Lubbit, Pity Iku, Semi Vamaliri. I think that's the guy who um, made his debut last week against Storm and scored a double on a um, pretty impressive debut. Tom Dearden, Chad Townsend, Jordan McLean, Jake Granville, Colin Hess, Big Luchi La Lua, Helam Lukey, Jason Tamalolo makes his return from his, uh, I think it's his knee or ACL. Uh, Sam McIntyre, Griffin Namey, uh, JTV, uh, KF, Brendan Elliott, R uh, Riley Price, Mitchell Dunn, Thomas Duffy, and Jake Burrock. Um, yeah, Burrock. Um, game's not played till Thursday or Friday, I think it is. is I'm not Friday too sure. Friday. Friday, Friday, one game Friday, two games Saturday, one game Sunday. Oh, see, that made sense for once. But, yeah, look, it's going to be good. Uh, I think <clears throat> the uh, last week we played against uh, the Little Storm at home. I think it was a good response from what we've been putting up in previous weeks. Um, coming off the origin um, performance midweek, I think all the players who did play sort of carried that form into this game and um, really put on a really good show for the uh, for the, the home faithful there up in Townsville and to get the season back on track it's what we needed I think currently if depending on which ladder you look on depending on you look on my ladder or we look on the uh, the actual ladder on the on the on the uh, on the ladder with no buy points we sit at the moment um, 9, 10, 11. We actually sit 12th, um, which is uh, pretty impressive to say that we, uh, we're 12th because we're only one place behind um, the Sydney Roosters, which apparently have been... Uh, that, that That's not that impressive if, uh, if I'm being... I, I know, because especially when you hear that, like, their completion rates, they're running last, their points... Uh, the points they make per game is last and all these. Well, actually, in the I actually have that. So I'll give you those stats quickly on – I'll give it on this game and I'll give them at the start of each game. So obviously ranked in attack, the Cowboys are ranked 13th. Um, yeah. They have the 13th best attack. Ranked in defense, they have the 13th ranked defense. So oh, their attack's yeah. not firing, their defense isn't firing, but it's kind of what we expected given a second-year syndrome that we talked about at the start of the season. You then look at, obviously, the Penrith Panthers, and I'll throw it back to you after this. They have the mm -hmm. fifth best ranked attack. However, they have the first best ranked defense. They're 100 points better off than the team coming second. So it's going to be a tough game for you. I think you've hit them at the right time. But before we talk about Penrith, finish up what you are saying about this team and what you think, obviously, with Origin Stars out. Oh, look, uh, I think you know, the only really major concerns are we're missing um... – Murray Tungalangai, Valentine Holmes, and um, Ruben Cotter um, is our big out. So it's not too – I think, as you said, we're hitting Reece. Pembroke. Who? Reese Robson. Oh, Reese Robson, sorry, to make his uh, origin debut. Oh, we'll even touch on that in the origin preview and review of game one. But, um, yeah, I just think, we, you know, as you said, we're going to hit Pembroke for the right time. Hopefully we continue – last week's form into this week's form. Um, 
no Nathan Cleary, no Luai, no Liam Martin, no Yo, no Stephen Crichton, uh, no Do'o. Um, really, we only got the uh, Dylan Edwards to really contend with there. And um, hopefully we can get the win. But, yeah, it's not too uh, – not, I'm, not, I'm not overly confident, but I'm hopeful. All right, well, let's talk obviously about that Penrith Panther side. Like you said, you've still got that threat in Dylan Edwards. You've got Sunia Taruva, Isaac Targo, Tyrone Peachy, Dom, Tom Jenkins. You've got the half partnership of Jamin Salmon and Jack Cogger. You've got Moses Leota, Mitch Kenny, James Fisher Harris, Scott Sorensen, Zach Hoskin, Matthew Eisenhoof locking that position in 13. You then have Sonny Luke making his way back to the bench with Lindsay Smith, who had an absolute cracking game on the weekend against my boys. You've got Spencer Lienu, Luke Garner in the 17 with Jack Cole in the 18 and the extended bench of Liam Harvey, Maverick Gaia, Eddie Blacker and Jesse McLean. So again, like you said, they are missing a few players, but besides that six and seven and maybe even the five. So from Tom Jenkins, Salmon and Cogger, it still looks like a very, very good squad. It's a strong squad on paper. They are missing a bit of direction, but we do know from last year when Salmon had to stand up with Cleary injured, he did more than what was expected of him, and he did step up in this game. So I do expect them to fight hard. I do expect them to have a crack. It is obviously your home game, so anything could happen. But Baxter, what do you think of this Penrith side, obviously minus a few troops, and then obviously give me a prediction on this one? Oh, they're missing a, a few troops, um, especially in their four pack in the halves. Um, I think James Hammond, they played he played good last year. Um, being the six to Sean O'Sullivan, who was also there, who also filled in for Nathan Cleary's absent at the start of the year when he was sort of being rested, um, and then towards the back end of the season when he was suspended. So now that he's not there, we have to see Jaden Salmon step up again. Jack Cogger. Um, has he been tested at the NRL level yet? I don't know. I don't know how he's going to be playing. But, um, yeah, you, you said that they're a good, uh, strong side, and that uh, looks like it's turning on paper apart from a few players. So in my uh, my, my tipping here, I, I'm not going to go away from my faithful, but I am going to back them in a 1-12 to 12 close one um, at home um, on Thursday, uh, Friday night football. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I kind of thought the most. Now I look at this lineup and I go, yes, they're missing Nathan Cleary, but you know what? They're going to have to start to learn to play without him probably for the next few weeks. Luai, as much as he always tortures the Roosters when he plays, he hasn't been playing the best football, and it's leading to questions of did he deserve to play in Origin? So we'll see how that one lines up. Cogger last week, I don't want to say he had a good game. I don't want to say that he's, he had a bad game because the Roosters didn't really offer much pressure at all. If I'm being completely honest. All he had to do was steady the ship, put a few kicks in, play in the system, and he absolutely decimated us. So that could have gone either way, but I think he did play a good game. Salmon, he's been there before. He knows what he's doing. You may be just lacking a bit of leadership in this squad. But I have sided with you in the 1-12, to but I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to go Pampers 1-12 to in this one. We're going to make it a little bit different. Obviously, if you are going to have a punt, the updated odds as of five minutes ago was $1.65 to Penrith and Cowboys two twenty five. So Cowboys will be with the underdogs, but they are at home. They will have that home crowd, the humidity. It's been quite cold down here in Penrith, so maybe Penrith might be a bit fatigued by the time they get up there. But Baxter, 1-12 to Cowboys, 1-12 to Penrith. Let's.